One of my favorite traps is the Paiute deadfall. This trap brings me more food than any other trap. I use this trap for mice, rats, squirrels, all the tasty little things that you, you eat while you're waiting for your big game. The trap construction is very simple. You just need a couple parts. You need a stick that will hold the rock up. And in this stick, I carve a seven notch. Notice I got a 45 degree here, a seven notch here, and then I just carved a, a notch around this to hold my string. Uh, this stick will rest on top of this, which is another 45 degree angle right here. The rock will be leaning here. My string will come from here to here. So what I need to do first is tie a string around this section. I just do a couple overhand knots. I'm not a knot guy, so overhand knots work for almost everything. Now I don't know where I'm going to tie the toggle on. The toggle is going to be on this string, but it has to be in the right spot. So what I have to do is put this trap together, then wrap the string around to figure out where I want my toggle. I want my toggle right here. Notice on my toggle that I squared the ends. That's not necessary, but it, it makes it a little bit easier to set. And that's not where you want the sensitivity anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't hurt the trap. So how this is gonna work is this seven notch is gonna go onto this 45 degree here. This string is gonna wrap around this, and then this bait stick is gonna be pressed up against the rock with bait on it. It's gonna hold up in this direction. The tension on this stick right here is holding this whole trap together. One of the advantages of the Paiute deadfall is that you can reuse it over and over and over. You might have to replace this stick though because this stick changes with each rock that you're using. This bait stick, we'll have to measure it on the rock that we're using to see what size it needs to be and that could change every time. All right, to set the trap, you take your seven notch. You should be able to hold this with one hand like this. Lift up your rock, find your balance point on your rock, and set it like that. You should still be able to hold it like this. Then you wrap your string around and let go your, your tension up there and you should be able to hold this with your finger like this. You never want to put your hand under this trap or you're going to smash your fingers. I've done it a million times, lost many fingernails. The weight of this rock should be about three times the weight of the animal that you're trying to get. We, we're setting this trap here because we noticed lots of little mice and rat trails and rabbit trails through this area and this is a transition area. So this is a good place where they'll be coming to look for food. We take our bait stick here. This is not baited, but we'll bait it before we finish. But for showing you guys, we won't bait it. And, and now we're looking for a divot on the underside of this rock that this bait stick will sit on, like so. Now we have to cage this trap in. We have to camouflage it. We have to put a fence around it. Animals are very fast. A, a rat could come in here, take the bait, and notice the rock falling and jump out of the way. No problem. But if we cage it in, it doesn't have to be a strong cage. All it has to do is distract them for one second. When they're getting ready to jump, if they see something blocking their jump, they'll, they'll try to go a different direction. And by then they're dead. So we'll have to cage this in, into the area that we want them to come in. I think we want them to come in right here. They'll go in, take the bait, nibble the peanut butter or whatever off of this, and boom, they're dead. What I'm using for bait here is peanut butter. I always carry peanut butter with me because every animal loves peanut butter and I love it myself. It's very high calorie, very fatty, and animals just can't resist it. So I'm spreading it on my bait here. I'm putting it on the end of my bait stick because I want the, the, the animal to go all the way back into the trap as far as they can under the rock. Now I'm resetting this trap. Again, finding my balance point, wrapping the toggle, and now I'm looking for a catch.
There we go. I found one. Okay, I gathered a bunch of sticks, I gathered some dead grass, and now we're going to fence this trap in. We don't have to descent this trap because we're not too far from civilization and animals oftentimes are attracted to the smell of people. People eat and leave trash and animals come and eat that trash. And so a lot of times a human scent will attract an animal. If you're way out in the wilderness though, a human scent will uh, scare an animal off. So a good way to, to scent your trap up to get scent free is to smoke it in a fire before you do it, before you set it but we don't have to worry about that right here. What I'm doing now is I'm just making a small fence around the trap. It's really important that the sticks you use when you're fencing this in are taller than the rock. Otherwise they might stop the fall of the rock and divert it sideways and your animal gets away. So we're using sticks that are a little bit taller. This doesn't have to be really close. Notice a rat could climb through there very easily. This is not to cage them. This is to distract them. So we're going to want the animal to come in, I don't know, maybe right here or maybe right here. This is probably safer since we have the plum tree back here. So we're going to try and divert them in here. They'll be less timid about running through this area than they say would to come around. One of the things you can do to descent your trap is carry charcoal with you and you can wipe down your hands before you set the trap and you can wipe down the trap with charcoal. Animals are not at all uh, made suspicious by the smells of fire because they're a natural thing. So that's a good way to clean human scent off your traps. Now that we have sticks in a cage around the trap, we're gonna cover all that in grass. Again, the grass won't stop them physically from coming through the, 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 the fencing, but it will stop them psychologically because they're split second jumping. And if they see something in their way, they're not gonna jump that direction. Then they're gonna try and jump this direction, which is the long route out, and they're not gonna make it. Also, covering this in grass makes it look safe. So they're not afraid to come up to it and investigate it. It looks like a safe spot for them to check something out. What we're aiming for here is rats. And the reason we're aiming for rats is because rats are delicious. Nobody realizes that rats and mice are so tasty, but they are delicious. They taste like sweet meat, they, like they have sugar in them. Uh, so they're, they're really good. They're probably my favorite wild game. We could also catch squirrels in there, and I like squirrels too, but squirrels are nothing compared to the taste of a rat. Another reason that we're aiming for rats out here is because they're so plentiful. There are literally hundreds of rats all around me. They're running around in this grass. They're mostly at night, of course, but they're running around in this transition area looking for food, eating insects, nuts. We could, we could scale this trap up if we wanted something larger like a possum, but possums taste nowhere near as delicious as a rat. Notice how we're trying to funnel the animal into here. All of the, the fencing is away from the moving parts of the trap, so it won't hinder the trap. Also, we got animal trails right here. Notice that the trap is off of the trail. We don't want it directly on it or they'll become suspicious. But this is a safe enough looking area to them that they, they might not mind stepping off the trail. And they're right here by cover, so they could run if they, if they got suspicious. So they're, they're gonna come in here, smell that bait, go up to it. The trap will set. They'll try to jump out. They'll look at the sides to see if they can jump out that way. They can't, so they have to jump out this way. And by then, they're already dead. One of the things that's great about the Paiute is that it's so easy to make. You can make 30 of them in a night sitting around your campfire. And you can walk along and set these. It takes five minutes to set one or less. And you can just set them in a long line. You really need a lot of traps out if you want to eat. You're going to need at least 20. There, there's a Pretty good chance that this will catch one, but there's a pretty good chance that it will not. But if we have 20 of them, we really increase our odds. If we have 50 of them, then we're almost insured good food every night. We need to check our traps pretty often, at least once a day, or your food's gonna spoil. In the summer, when it gets hot, I would say twice a day, morning and night, check your traps. If you don't have peanut butter to bait your trap, there's a lot of other things you can use. You wanna aim for something that the animal likes but doesn't have easy access to. One of the things I like to use is grass seeds. I'll, I'll chew up a, a handful of grass seeds and make a paste out of it and use that as a bait. Other things you can use are fruits, like dried fruits, raisins, um, 
that you find in the trees, you know, dried grapes out here or plums. We've got a plum tree right behind us. If you were going to use plums, this would not be the place to set the trap with plums. You know, you would want to move it somewhere else farther away where the animals like plums, but they don't want to walk all the way over here to get them. <laughs> 